Moving on to part two of SIHH. Okay, so uh, what's next and most exciting, or say least exciting, and again, most made fun of, Richard Mille. Uh, seemingly, Richard Mille didn't really come out with anything new, right? They did a few 07s, and they did a few 37s, and they did a few RM16s, and boy, did they do a interesting job. The only thing that comes to mind is Candy Shop. I take you to the candy shop. I let you the knowledge drop. I'm gonna read something right from their website. Bon Bon. Just saying the world is not enough to make you smile. It manages to convey a combination of pleasure, good cheer, and sharing all at once. This collection is disruptive, elegant, daring, and playful. In a word, creative. Cecile Gannat, artistic director of Richard Mille. <laughs> Boy, did I get a lot of phone calls and comments and people saying, what the hell is Richard Mille doing? What is this candy collection? What is this, what, what is this all about? Uh, what the hell are they doing? Where are the new RM11s? Where are the new RM30s? And new limited editions, Bubba's, Nadal's, and so on and so forth. The highly complex piece as well. Richard Mille did an extremely smart thing. They stepped out of the norm. And by stepping out of the norm, they did it in such a creative way uh, that is so avant-garde and so crazy that, look, uh, some of these watches look like one of those Mickey Mouse watches I would get for my three-year-old, you know? And the price is uh, certainly not that of a Mickey Mouse watch. So they did 10 different models and a total of a whopping 60 watches. That's not a whole lot. So what does that tell you? First and foremost, he's still sticking with that really, really low production versus high demand. Uh, I do know, and I can tell you this for a fact, they're already all sold out. So no matter how much fun was made out of these watches, from sh shame on the wrist to a slew of other accounts on Instagram, it doesn't really matter because he already pre-sold them all right at SIHH. These watches are gone. They're going to be trading over list should you decide to get one because, and you'd be hard pressed to get one. These watches are for those ladies that already have everything and they want something really different from a major name who said F you to the rest in the watch industry and said, you know what, I'm gonna make lollipop watches, I'm gonna make citron watches, I'm gonna make candy watches, I'm gonna make something that's so cool, pop art and different. Again, keeping in line with the craftsmanship, all the stuff is hand painted, handmade, all these little candies and all this, stuff, they're all painstakingly made by hand. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, it took a lot of hours and a lot of work to go into these pieces. And that's why they're gonna demand such high retail prices. I mean, they're all gonna be way over $100,000. And again, all sold out. And I'm not surprised that they're all sold out. Now, was it a good move for Richard Meal to just come out with something that crazy and that little of a production? Right now, Richard Meal is riding the wave. His 1103s are back ordered for more than a year, sometimes two. Uh, the NTPT pieces, people are waiting in line years at this point to receive one of those watches. So he has his production set to sell an X amount of watches over the next couple of years. He already knows how much money he's going to make. Most of his watches over the last year were sold out of the boutiques, hence they're now all trading at over list on a secondary market. Why not come out with an 1103 in a different case? Why not come out with a, an 1104 or something like that? I'm sure that's something that's in the works. It takes time and it takes a lot of work at the lab, a lot of research, a lot of fails until you get it right. So why make an 1104? They will. I don't know what it is. Again, it's just a rumor that I heard from an RM dealer. But in the meanwhile, they leave you with this crazy avant-garde collection. What do I think overall aesthetically? I'll put it to this way. If I brought, well, let's see, not, let's say not the NTPT one. Let me pick one. Uh, if I brought the licorice RM16 home, I believe my wife would like it. If I brought home the 0703 Marshmallow, I bet you my wife would like it. And if you took a look at majority of these watches and you showed them to ladies and they said, what do you think of these? Some of them would say, well, it's a little too crazy for me. I don't know about this black NTPT here. I don't know about this. But majority of them will still say these are pretty watches. This is something they would like to put on their wrist. If you didn't mention, let's say, prices to them, right? Listen, A plus for doing something different. I don't like the combination of black NTPT and all that colorful stuff. I think that it's like rugged, but yet colorful and playful at the same time. I wish they sort of stuck to those pinks and yellows and the light greens and so on and so forth. That really works together, especially on this RM0703. The cupcake piece in that, I guess it's purple ceramic and they have a lot of purple hues, hues on the dollars and so on and so forth. I think that was a pretty good looking watch. Even the 07 Leech, even though it has that NTPT dial, but I think the overall combination uh, kind of works. If you, look at the, if you look at the dial design, the lime greens, the purples, the yellows, they still tend to work with that TPT case. I wish they made it white. Like if white TPT with that would probably be um, a hell of a combination if you ask me. 
So that's it on Richard Mule. Not much to talk about because, again, they didn't come out with much. They're doing uh, what they do best, supply and demand. They come out with very little, something very different, something that nobody else does. And that's just it. Let's go to what I feel is a brand that's coming back, has come, already come back strong, and it's coming back even stronger, and that is Roger Dubuis. I've talked in the past about the issues that Roger Dubuis has with the closeout, with the distributor that it had in the past, how it was labeled as that brand that never held its value, and so on and so forth, while times have changed. Over the last couple of years, with the introduction of Lamborghini watches, Pirelli watches, and things of that nature, their Excalibur line has exploded. And even if you go back to the days when they weren't doing so good in terms of resale because somebody decided to dump a bunch of closeouts, a distributor that really didn't do his job and hurt the brand for probably a good 10 years, Roger Dubuis has always made good looking watches. You can tell them, you can go back 20 years and pick a ladies model, a men's model, they're still good looking watches. Their manufacturer is superb, their movements are superb. They always have been and I'm very, very excited to see them more or less back at the top. My prediction is that Roger Dubuis is going to be in that top five brand bracket over the next couple of years, I'm telling you. Uh, rightfully so, look at their new Excalibur lineup. So obviously their relationship with Lamborghini is something that they're taking to the next level. I'm going to go with, you have the Excalibur Spider Huracan, you have the Excalibur Spider uh, Performante, Huracan Performante. Uh, they did the one-off. Uh, Excalibur one-off is, oh my God, this is... Uh, this is just, I can't even begin to describe uh, this watch. Uh, it's a three-way relationship between Roger Dubuis, Lamborghini, and Pirelli. Uh, and uh, the next generation of a motorsport and horology has to offer. Okay, And uh, it's a unique piece. They're saying it's a unique piece custom made with our exclusive partners featuring design and technique both inspired by the automotive industry. A whole new caliber showcase, showcase and expressive and contemporary watchmaking. I urge you to go on to their website and actually watch the video for this watch. Look at the pictures of this watch. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's a limited edition of one. I am fairly certain it's already spoken for. I wish I could have bought that watch, but I guarantee if somebody bought it and decides to resell it, it will sell over its original list. I don't know what the retail price is. It is a double trivia. The use of materials on this watch is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, just look at the watch. You, you look at it and, and, and you literally see a Lamborghini. It's like, this is the Lamborghini of Watch World today. Now moving on to uh, the editions that you can actually buy that are not a one-off, the Spider. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read you what it says on the website and they said it best. The second caliber developed with a partnership with Lamborghini. This new engine offers a 12 degree angle balance escapement with an automatic winding mechanism displaying a rim-like rotor. The ultimate, the upper caliber features a strut bar design bridge recalling the ones of a V10 engine of the Lamborghini Huracan supercar. Again, go on there, watch that video. An absolutely amazing watch. This is not something that I can sit here and describe the details that I would rather much have it in hand, and I'm sure I will have these pieces in hand very shortly as soon as they produce them all. But uh, again, uh, not much to be said about this. I love the Excalibur line from them. Take a look at the Spider, uh, the Hercon Performante, the yellow accent against the blackened case, the strap. I mean, everything about the design of the case of the watch is just literally something else. It's something different. It's something that's absolutely amazing looking. I can't think of better looking sports watches out there than those. And again, I'm biased. I love Audemars Piguet, but I look at some of these new Excaliburs out there and I'm just saying to myself, wow, what a good looking watch. A plus on those. And notice if you go on there, they kept their lineup small. As far as the novelties are concerned, they only show 12 pieces, right? And a lot of them are variations of previous pieces. Uh, the Skeleton Turbions, for example, did a different variation. They did one with diamonds and rose gold for the ladies on the purple strap. They did a men's piece with a slate wheel to show the R markers. Again, it's a watch that they made in the past. Look at what they did with the Excalibur studs. Uh, I don't know if this was a collaboration with La Bouton, uh shoes, but it certainly looks like one. Let me read. Is it? It's not. Uh, but it certainly is something that's reminiscent of La Bouton shoes with the spikes. And I think it's, again, it's a play on existing uh, ladies Excalibur, but yet a completely different take on it. Again, a, a bit avant-garde, very cool, very funky. I like what they did there. I love it. I love it in black. I love it in rose. I, I just think it's, it's just a cool watch for a girl to wear. It's a 36 millimeter, which means it's not too big. It's not too small. I wouldn't be surprised to find guys, some guys wearing that watch as well, because at 36 millimeters, it's a fairly decent sized watch. The Excalibur Spider Ultimate Carbon with the diamonds is a, men, uh, is a truly men's watch. That it, it literally looks like a spider. If you, if you look at the watch, uh, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. And, and here's the thing. They're using diamonds there, but they use it in a way where it's not a bling-bling watch. It just becomes part of the design. 
And last but not least, I'm going to read you once again about the Excalibur shooting star flying turbine, and I'm going to read it from them because they said it best. The next generation of skeleton flying turbine to be displayed in such a small size piece. This Excalibur 36 is the perfect illustration of Roger W.E.'s ability to build the impossible. Convinced that women deserve to wear daring and technical calibers, our watchmakers have worked for two years to develop the small size turbine, carrying the iconic astral signature enhanced by sparkling shooting star. It is a new path in the world of skeleton complications available in 18 karat gold. Again, it's not that easy to take a uh, 36 millimeter watch and fit a complicated turbion movement inside that watch. And they took the challenge and like I said, it took them two years to do it. So I'm just as impressed with one of these and I'm fairly certain ladies would love to have one of those things on their wrist. So overall for Roger W, I'm gonna give it a big, big A plus. They're here to stay. They're here only to move up and up and up. All the newer stuff like the Pirelli and those new, all those new turbines, I did not sell them for less than 25% off retail because I wasn't able to get out there and pick them up any cheaper because this is what they're trading at. People want those watches. Again, there's no retail prices on this, but their retail prices based on what you get are extremely reasonable in comparison to some of the other brands that are out there. And uh, I'm gonna move on to the next brand. Let's talk about Panerai. I've talked about Panerai in the past. You guys have asked me questions about Panerai. You know, why have they died down? And honestly, their new releases probably go in line with what I said. I told, I told you guys in the past, I feel like Panerai needs to reinvent themselves. They need to cut down production drastically, make a lot less watches, and come up with something different. Well, they achieved one of the two at SIHAs. They made a lot less pieces this year, but they failed to once again reinvent themselves because this SIHA release was all about the submersible. So what did they do? They came out with the Gulami Neri editions, right? Uh, and this is, again, it's a submersible chronograph, 47 millimeter. They did one with the blue bezel. They did another one that's PVD, uh, all black. Uh, what else did they do? They also did a limited edition uh, for Mike Horn, okay, who is an extreme explorer, right? Again, diving watching with 47, uh, 47 millimeter case, uh, changed up the bezel a little bit. Uh, it feels like the bezel is actually stamped in. Again, it's another submersible, a regular submersible for that matter. But it's made from eco-titanium, which means recyclable materials. The strap is just the same, recyclable materials. How much does that matter to an average watch collector if somebody's eco-conscious? Uh, there's not a whole lot of watches out there that are not made out of eco-grade titanium to put a big hurt on our ozone layer or anything else out there in terms of manufacturing. Again, this is not a car manufacturer. Any other watch manufacturer out there, I don't know how much bad they do to our ecosystem. I just can't put the two together. Nevertheless, a good marketing gimmick, I guess. Ocean Savings, all right, 19 pieces. Uh, submersible Carbon Tech, Marina Militaire. Now, the Carbon Tech arguably did really, really well. When they first came out, they were sort of trading a, a little bit over list, list, and now they're back down. I just sold the PAM 616 Carbon Tech to a client for 11,000, a watch that was trading around 16, 17, just a year prior to that, or two years prior to that. Nevertheless, good looking watch. I like the submersible in the carbon look. I like the submersible 47 millimeters. You know, the Carbo Tech look is actually very mean, both the dial and the bezel and the case. So I like the way this watch looks, specifically because they did the dial in the same Carbo Tech. Italian Navy Commandos, three, 33 pieces. Uh, they made a submersible Marina Militaire Carbo Tech with, again, same variation as the old black, except now this has a green strap and green markers on a dial along with the hands. Love the look. I love the way it looks. It's a beautiful military watch. They also then did the 42 millimeter submersibles instead of the 44. So they made them somewhat smaller for those that have a small wrist. Again, a good variety. They did it with the black bezel, they did it with the blue bezel. Again, a few variations. They also did it with the Carbotech and everything that I mentioned before. With, I like the Carbotech 42 millimeter, which is the PAM, what, 960 and the PAM 1616 and the 47 millimeter. I like the blue markers against the black Carbotech. I think it look really looks, it, I think it looks really, really cool. New Submersible BMG Tech. The new Submersible BMG Tech is a professional diamond watch born of innovation of the Labor Laboratoria DED, whatever that means. 47 mm case, crown protection device, and made from BMG Tech, an alloy characterized by high strength and corrosion resistance. The bezel is crafted from Carbon Tech. The introduction of a new material, but yet it still looks like a titanium submersible, right? Again, cool looking watch. I love the blue markers, I love the blue hands. Again, but a little bit of innovation there for you. All minor things with a beautiful marketing spin. Design wise, looks wise, every single one of these submersibles I would absolutely wear. Every one of these submersibles will sell like hotcakes, don't get me wrong, because they made so very little of them. There's nothing new. Uh, use of eco-friendly materials, okay. Uh, use of Carbotech, we already seen that Panerai. 
use of this new material, BMG, whatever it is, I can't even pronounce who made it. Mm, okay. Uh, if I get out there tomorrow and uh, I make a new Royal Oak and I use a different type of titanium or something else, not much attention is going to be paid to that. But for the most part, Panerai did one of two things. They drastically limited their production of watches, at least the new models that are coming out. A plus on that. I would have loved to see a brand new model. Not a radio mirror, not a submersible, not a marina, not a 1950 case. I would love to have seen something new. And you know what? Uh, my favorite Panera is probably going to be the PAM, uh, was it 225, the Flytex Immersible in the 47 millimeter, one of the very uh, hottest limited editions that Panera uh, came out back in the day. And this is reminiscent of those, obviously, because of the case size. But again, give me something new. Try something different. Don't keep sticking to the same thing that you're doing. And uh, I don't know if it's because they're strictly controlled by the Richmond Group. I don't know what's going on over there. But somebody in Panera needs to wake up and say, guys, we can't make it, keep making the same shit over and over and over. Eventually, we're going to die. I know their sales were down across the board last year and the year before that. I know people kind of got over the whole collectability. There's a lot less Paneristi out there than there were, let's say, 10 years ago. Do something new. Dare to do something new. I don't know. <sighs> Call me. Let's sit down and talk. How about that? And, I'll, and I'll, I'll draw a new model for you because at this point, it's a little bit tiring to keep seeing the same thing over and over in sort of a different wrapper. But... Still give you an A-plus on the new wrapper. Still give you a, a, an A-plus on all these new editions you came out. My favorite watch on here would probably be the Italian Commando watch. I love the green and the black. I love the green uh, uh, markers. I love the green hands. I love the green strap against the Carbo Tag dial. The Carbo Tag dial, definitely an A-plus on that. Close second is going to be that same watch with the blue markers. I, aesthetically, it's, it's just a good-looking watch. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, who else can we talk about from SIHH? Let's talk about...